Okay. Hey, Sean Clement here, Richmond Hill Golf Learning Center. How you doing? So um, today's topic, this particular lesson, lots of fun because it's just going to an added uh, incentive or an added communication on how to do things that much better get great descending blow with the golf ball I know a lot of you are still trying to hit the ball first and, and then hit the ground after take the divot after the golf ball this is really going to help you out okay so contact with golf ball so let's first and foremost start with the wedge okay and then we'll wake up make our way over to the seven iron in a bit now first thing I want you to l let you in on you see Scully the clavicles here at the front, right? They join the rib cage right here. So there's a little cavity right below your, your Adam's apple for the guys, right? The girls have this, this same position. So you notice how the clavicles join the rib cage and it joins right here and we call the sternum notch, right? This represents the center of the shoulder socket or the, the shoulder joints. So imagine there's a, a big pipe coming out of that shoulder, right? And out of that notch, I should say, and then you hang a coat hanger on it, right? So this would represent how your shoulders are sitting on top of your rib cage. Now, you notice there's not a lot of mobility there, and as far as when you take your grip, your hands connect to the club and leave very little range of motion for the shoulders, it's about five degrees. So this would represent the first hinge point of your swing. So we're going to go to a chip shot, brace against the left side, hands forward. If you go to my golf pro lesson, chip yips, or golf pro lesson, how to feel the short swing. Those two videos are really going to help you out here. Understand this a little bit better as well. So weight forward, hands forward. Now I start the machine. Notice how my lowercase y is swinging around that sternum notch. So if I take the sternum notch and make sure that it's slightly in front of the ball and my head, I take the cheek, right, your left cheek, make sure it's to the back of the ball so my head's behind the ball and my sternum notch is in front of the ball. Now from there, the club is always going to bottom out naturally in front of the golf ball. This represents the low point of the arc of the swing. Now, you've heard that, you know, low point of the swing is underneath that left shoulder, well that, that's, that's really great for a tennis player who's doing a backhand with one arm. That would represent the center of the swing. But sorry to say we got two hands and we're handcuffing both hands and both arms to the club. That means both shoulder sockets are in play now. So we have an arm club unit. We just connected this bone and we fuse that bone to the rest of the bones right here of the body. The same way that the, the two bones of the lower arm are connected to the humerus, right? Ligaments, tendons, muscles. So we just took these portable tendons and locked them in. Now I got both arms. So if they're both arms are involved and you're letting that arm club unit swing back and through, see the low point's gonna be right underneath that sternum notch. So I take that sternum notch, nudge it against my left side, and just make sure that the cheek is behind the ball. Perfectly crisp contact. So let's go to a pitch shot. So if I take that a little further, backswing, right? Notice how in the backswing, when my right arm folds and my wrist hinge, and by the way, this is not a closed face, you guys. When my right arm folds and my wrist hinge, you can see how the toe of the club comes up. And now when I'm coming back down, look at that beautiful position, right? So don't try to manipulate the club in any positions. Allow the arm club unit to swing freely. And at one point, that right arm is going to fold all by itself. And when the right arm folds, it rotates into position and allows your wrist to hinge. Now we're in a great position to come back to the ball. So I let my arm club unit fall. Everything falls around this hinge point first. And then the club head releases around the second hinge point after, which are the hands. So you notice at impact, I have the notch in front, my hands are in front, I got my lowercase y. I will have impeccable contact of the ball, then the ground, without trying. All I gotta do is let it fall. If I have a club right here, let it fall, it falls straight down, doesn't it? Take it back, let it fall. The arm club unit falls first, then the club head unit falls second, around the second hinge point. If I try to hit the ball, 
can't save you there, okay? So, notch in front, weight forward, hands forward, cheek behind, toss it up, let it fall. Crisp, solid contact. Toss it up, let it fall. There you go, all right. So, we take the seven iron. We get a little longer club. This is why when you go into my, one of my favorite series of videos is Tilted Spiral. Golf Pro Lesson Tilted Spiral Part 1, 2, and 3. We're taking that, bracing it forward, and we're keeping it braced. Right leg is support post, left leg is leaning post. Super solid contact. So as the stance gets wider and the club, because the club gets longer, all we're doing with that right side is making sure that it supports me staying very close to that left side, even if my left heel comes off the ground. So if I take that left heel off the ground, watch what happens. Do you see anything happening with the center of my, uh, my notch? The notch still stays in that position. And I got this super solid contact with the club. The ball's just rocketing off the club face. And I know that my divot's coming out after the ball is struck. Now, when you get to the driver, when the ball is on a tee, you just want to make sure that that notch is now slightly behind the ball, all right? So for all of you who face the golf ball, look at the notch. It's right above the ball. The club goes up, comes back down under the ball, pop fly, right? So we make sure the notch stays against the left side, but behind the ball, not in front. Now the club goes up, comes back down, and from there, catches the ball slightly on the upswing. Notch against left side. Solid contact, notice the tee is still there, right? So I'm catching the ball on its natural upswing, okay? And for the irons, if the notch and the head get in front of the ball, now you're coming across, all right? So all you over the toppers, if the head moves forward, see that? I didn't do anything with my arms. Everything is gonna naturally come across now. So, cheek behind the ball, notch in front of the ball. Let everything flow around that. Body gets out of the way, body gets out of the way. Enjoy that one. <laughs>